Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about wool diaper covers. And wool diaper covers are something that you would put over a fitted diaper or this large single layer piece of cloth. It's called the flat diaper or just a pre-fold diaper. Now wool diaper covers are the most breathable option that you have and they're also the only diaper cover that's made out of a natural fiber so it's the only organic option if you want to go completely organic with your diapering. Um, wool is antibacterial which is awesome and I think the best thing about wool is that it is absorbent and you don't have to clean it very often. So what makes it so absorbent is um, lanolin, which you probably already have around your house that you may have used for breastfeeding or if you're currently breastfeeding. Um, if not, if you know you don't have any or if you're not breastfeeding or whatnot, you can just pick some up at Target or wherever. Um, and the lanolin, um, I'll show you how to lanolize your covers. When the baby or toddler pees, the lanolin self-cleans the material. It's the craziest thing. You don't have to wash it very often. I mean, I don't know any other material that you can pee on, let it dry, and then use it again. Like, it doesn't smell, it's clean, it's just insane. So, there are some different types of wool covers. There's just the traditional cover with snaps, and then you can get um, what's called the soaker or shorties. Um, a soaker is that something you just pull up that doesn't have any snaps. It would generally not have a leg cuff, so it would kind of fit more like a big pair of underwear over the top. Shorties are more like where it has a leg cuff and it fits more like shorts. So those are another option. Or there's also longies that are just like a pair of pants. So what's awesome about using wool, like if you're using wool longies, is you only have to use two pieces, just the diaper and the pants, versus if you're using like a POL cover, then you need the diaper, the cover, and a pair of pants. So it actually does save you a step. Um, I think some people avoid wool because for two reasons. One, they think that it's really difficult, and two, they think it's very expensive. And um, once you know how to care for them, it's really actually easier than any other system. And wool can be very expensive if you buy new wool and if you buy some expensive cloth diaper brands. But if you go onto Etsy, you can easily find a number of shops selling soakers or shorties or even longies from like 10 to $12. So that's cheaper than a lot of PUL covers. And wool, you don't need as many covers as you do because they don't need to be washed very frequently. So you can easily get by with three or four wool covers for full-time diapering. Another thing people like wool for is overnight use because it is so breathable and it is absorbent. So that's another way that you could use it if you didn't want to use it during the day. So I'm going to tell you what to do with your wool covers just for um, the beginning and when you just get one new what to do with it and then long term how to care for it. So say you just got this cover in the mail. Um, if you buy it on Etsy and it's like upcycled wool, you know, where they buy a sweater at Goodwill or whatnot and then sew it into a wool cover like this one it was an old sweater that was sewn. Um, sometimes the shop owner will either wash it or lanolize it for you, but um, oftentimes when you buy a wool cover, you're going to need to do the work yourself. So let's pretend this hasn't been washed or lanolized, which this um, particular cover wasn't. It was a new cover. So the first thing you need to do is wash it. And I use Euclid, and this is easy to find. So you don't want the water too cold or too hot because you don't want to shrink your cover. Wool requires hand washing, which sends a lot of people running for the hills, but again, you really like, you don't have to do it very often. So um, you want to get the, you know, turn on the faucet so it's just like not hot, not cold water, just like a nice, I think they call it tepid. I could look on here. Yeah, tepid water temperature. So um, once you do that, then you just, you know, fill the plug, put in like maybe a cap full. I don't measure, I just kind of dunk a little until it looks good. And then you put your soaker or cover into the sink. And just kind of like, you don't want to be rough with it because you don't want to um, misshape it or whatnot. You have to be kind of gentle when it's wet, but just kind of, you know, take in, just kind of like give it a few squeezes with my hands, turn around, squeeze a little bit. And then you just let it sit there. You know, you can let it soak for like 15, 20 minutes. Just kind of go about your day, whatever you're doing. Then, if this is the first time that you're washing it, which in this case it would be, you need to do something called lanolize it. And that's when you, you know, use your nipple cream or whatnot. Um, needs to be lanolin, though, to make your cover really absorbent. So, what you do in that case is you just kind of squeeze out the excess water, 
take it out, just like put it on the side of the sink, and then you need to, I know this sounds really complicated, I promise it's not, then you need to get um, like an old jar, this is just an old spaghetti jar, and have some super hot water, if you have like a tea kettle or something, you could boil some water, or just like put hot water in the sink is fine too, or you can even like just put a little bit of water in here, and microwave it, you know, for a minute, that's the fastest way, and then take like a pea-sized amount of lanolin, and put it in the jar, and then um, you just stir it, you just like shush, 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 shake it up, you can see this is like all gross in here, I just always use this solely for this purpose and just keep the lid off in between so it doesn't get gross in there. Um, anyway, so the hot water like makes the, the lanolin melt because it comes out in like a really thick gel consistency. So that um, kind of melts it. Then you again go back to your sink, get the tepid water going, and then um, you just pour that in so that, you know, the hot water is getting dispersed so when you put your cover in it's not like really hot spot, like a hot water spot. So kind of mix that in, then you sit, you know, stick the soaker back in, you can soak it, you know, a good 20, 30 minutes, like really let that seep in. Then um, you want to drain the water, wring it out, and then these need to be air dried. If you dry them in the washing machine, they'll shrink. So um, you just kind of wring out as much as you can. Then you get um, a clean towel, put on the floor, lay this in the clean towel and roll the towel up in there. And then I find a dry spot on the towel and I do that again. And then you can just lay this flat to dry or, um, you know, hang it over the shower rod or whatnot. And um, depending on the thickness of your wool, like this is a nice thick cover. This will take about two days to dry. So like every, you know, like once a day or every half day, I'll turn it inside out to let the other side get more air. But if it's a thinner cover, I have some that are thin, then that takes like a day or less. So um, that is how you do it if you're starting from scratch. So another lanolin option also is like a spray lanolin, but this doesn't work as well. So this is better for like once your cover's already had in it a really good initial lanolin soak than if you're, you know, when you're doing your regular cleaning, then you can use a spray of this. So um, then once this is dry, then it's ready. So this is where it becomes super duper easy. And really like that process I just explained to you takes, you know, obviously the soaking time takes time but the hands-on time is less than less than 10 minutes and depending on um, how much use you're getting out of your covers you only have to do that like every two to four weeks so it's not it's not bad at all I promise so then just like regular use this is how you take care of them so say this was on the baby and he pees through his you know through his diaper and it gets wet on the inside of this then what you do is you take this take it off the baby turn it inside out so the, like air can get to like where it was wet and then you just like throw it over a chair or wherever it can get air and you just let it dry and then that's where the really cool stuff happens where it self cleans I swear it's just it never smells it's never like ew gross like eh, it's so filthy there's pee on it that lanolin like really reacts to stuff in the wool fibers and it makes it totally clean that's it's the coolest thing ever so that happens then in the meantime while that's drying you just grab another one and use that one and then by the time the next change, this, you know, just feel it, it's dry, it's ready to go again. So um, you just use it over and over and over and over again. You know, so a lot of people have different recommendations of how often they wash. Some wash every two weeks, some wash every two and a half weeks or keep a really good schedule. I don't keep a really good schedule. I'm not super fussy about my wool. When I'm like, I haven't washed this in a really long time, like, you better wash it. Then I wash it. Um, people say that, you know, eventually they'll, st they'll start to smell and then you should wash them. I don't have any small problems with mine, but... Um, I, I guess I haven't gone long enough to need to for it to smell. Um, or if it gets poopy, it obviously needs to be washed. So for poop, if you have like a, a little bit of poop, um, if you're securing your diapers underneath, poop probably won't get onto your cover. But if you try to like tri-fold a pre-fold or pad fold, um, a flat in here, you're probably going to get poop on the sides. I used to try to do that and get away with it, and I just got sick of cleaning the poop off. But anyway, say you get like a, just a tiny bit of poop, then what you do is they make wool wash bars. And I don't remember the brand of this one, but they're easy to find on cloth diaper shops. So you just get the tepid water going, get it wet in that spot, take your bar, rub it on the poop, and then it just like, you know, washes off and it's no big deal. That's if it's just like a little bit of poop. And then you just let this dry and it's good to go. But if it's like a ton of poop, you're gonna need to rinse it off. I would still kind of like spot clean that spot, get all the poop out and then, you know, start on just like a regular clean with your Euclid. Now, Euclid does have some lanolin in it, 
So if your cover has been well lanolized recently, then um, the lanolin that's in the eucalyn will be enough. So you just do your, you know, trepid water, put some of this in, let it soak 15-ish minutes, whatever, um, and then just, you know, do the towel roll and lay it to dry. Um, or you can do your wash with this, and then if you want just like a little bit extra protection than the lanolin in the eucalyn provides, then that's a good time to use like the um, lanolin spray because it's just like it helps some, but it's not as good as like a true soak. So um, I would say after you do like a really solid um, lanolizing when you first get your covers, they don't need like a really good one often at all. The only time you would um, notice when to do that is if it just doesn't feel like much is repelling through this. So maybe like you're wearing your baby's wearing it and it feels like the moisture went out onto the outside and it feels like wet to the touch through the outside, that means it needs a good lanolin thing again. So I would say like um, my most, the covers he wears the most often, maybe I need to do like a really good lanolin revamp like every three, four months or so. So, and it's not hard. Um, it's really not. You just micro a little bit of water, put it in there, swish it around, and then just add that step to the end of the washing process. So. It doesn't take long, but it's just nice that you don't have to even deal with it very often. So um, I hope that covers most of the wool um, questions. Um, I love wool. I use wool like probably 85-90% of the time. Um, we do have some P-Wool covers that are great for daycare or if other people are watching your kids or traveling or, um, you know, things like that. But I love wool because it's just, it's a total natural system there's no you know if you're using a pre-fold and a wool cover right now this is my favorite just using like a pre-fold fold it onto baby with either a snappy which I'm coming around on I used to like really hate on snappies and I don't know I filed mine down really good so it's not sharp and I'm having more success for it with it lately but anyway um snappy or boingo it together pull a soaker over that's my favorite combo right now these two um this is completely organic. This is an organic prefold. This is an organic wool cover. And even if these weren't organic, even if it's just cotton and regular wool, then at least there's no plastic. There's no synthetic materials whatsoever. It's just the most breathable option for baby. So um, that's all. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And if I know the answers, I'd be happy to help you out. Um, otherwise, I'm sure there are some other good YouTube videos or just some um, basic internet search. I know that Green Mountain Diapers also does a nice job kind of explaining some wool and wool care, and they sell a lot of wool products and um, wool care products. So that's another good resource for you. So um, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Okay, bye.